Uh, this is um, video one for your genetics uh, lesson preparation. Uh, we're going to go through some basic terminology in this video, um, just so you can get some better understanding of how um, genetics works. So uh, you should be taking some additional notes off this video to accompany the type notes you already have. Um, we're going to look in this video at the term gene again um, and look at a slightly, a slightly different definition for the gene. Uh, we're going to look at uh, allele, um, homozygous, heterozygous, locus, um, and a few other key terms just to get us started uh, with this topic. In the next videos, um, I will then be using those terminologies to look at specific types of um, inheritance. So just to remind you, you should have uh, these notes, okay? Um, they can be downloaded from the website as well. So the section we're going to start with is this one here, uh, looking at some of these uh, key terms. Uh, I may mention a couple of others as well as we go through the video. Uh, I think it's important actually I mention what the inheritance uh, means, uh, because that's what we're actually looking at um, with, with regard to this topic. Um, so uh, make sure that you've read through the notes as well. And uh, this video will just add a bit more clarity, I hope, to um, uh, these genetic terms. Okay, you've also got um, in the back of the type notes, I believe they are, is uh, a, a brief glossary of the genetic terms. Okay, so um, don't expect you to sort of memorize all of these. You need some sort of explanation behind them. All right, but these are all the key terms that eventually we will um, consider. Okay, so uh, there's the notes. Um, you should also have uh, a question booklet as well, which um, uh, you'll need to do uh, a couple of questions from once you've watched um, the further videos. Okay, so um, the first place to start then is actually to... Um, give you an idea of what uh, genetics is and what the term inheritance means. Um, inheritance really is, is to do with how an organism acquires characteristics from its parents by the transfer um, from the parent to the offspring um, of genes. Okay, so inheritance is all to do with the, the, the passing on from parent to offspring of their genes or genetic material. Okay, so in terms of um, the, the, the title of this topic, which is genetics, um, genetics then <clears throat> is actually the, the study of the transmission of genes from parent to offspring. Okay, so genetics is the study basically of uh, inheritance. Okay, um, so, <clears throat> based on the fact it's to do with genes, uh, we need to start, I think, um, and look at an alternative definition of a gene. Um, linked to that um, will be uh, the term allele, and linked to that also we have to reconsider homologous chromosomes, which uh, you should know all about by now. Okay, so let's get some... Uh, stuff done on uh, the gene. Okay, so um, currently you know that um, a gene um, is a sequence of nucleotides that codes for a protein. Okay, now slight modification of that for this topic is basically it's the unit of hereditary that is located on a chromosome and is transmitted from one generation to the next. All right, so um, if you've got uh, a cell there, 
we know that um, when we produce gametes, because if you were going to pass on your genes to the offspring, you do that via gametes. Okay, so there's the sort of parent. Okay, and this then would be uh, the gamete uh, cell from that parent. If you've got uh, a gene there, just as a, a simple circle, that gene will be passed on uh, into the gamete. Okay, now as you know about fertilization, uh, if you have the second parent, okay, that also has a gene, they will then produce uh, the gamete. Okay, and it's only when those two gametes fertilize and come together that they that you then get uh, the offspring. Okay, and within that offspring, it will have uh, the, the the genes then uh, from both parents. Okay, so that's a basic um, principle here of how genes are transferred from parent uh, to offspring via the gametes. So, um, that's a gene. It's the unit of heredity um, and they are located on chromosomes. So, the next thing to consider is the chromosomes. Okay. Now, in this topic, we do need to talk about homologous chromosomes. And for this topic, I will not be showing replicated chromosomes. So I won't be drawing X-shaped chromosomes in this topic. Just going to keep things simple and look at sort of single-shaped um, chromosomes. So, in terms of the homologous chromosome then, um, if I just draw a basic rectangle, and they should be the same size, because they are homologous, so that's about the same size. Now, located on those chromosomes, okay, are going to be genes. And if I represent a gene just by... Uh, a brown box okay that's a gene now because our chromosomes are homologous we also have a corresponding gene on the other chromosome okay so the next uh, term I want to introduce at this point is that of locus Okay, now a locus is the word that describes the position of a gene on a chromosome. Uh, chromosome. So, each chromosome, uh, sorry, each gene will have a different locus. So we've got uh, the first gene here in brown, which is at a, a certain locus. If I draw another one in, a bit further down in purple, that gene is at a different locus. Okay, so that's all um, locus means. Now, the term locus is important because the positioning of genes is important. Um, it becomes important when we look at um, crossing over later on in the topic. Um, but it's also important when we come to consider the term allele. Okay, so this is the next term um, I need to describe to you. And it's very much linked um, to genes and uh, locus as well. So... The thing to understand about an allele is it has a definition to it and the definition is an alternative form 
of a gene. Okay, so that uh, that term actually needs to uh, be explained. Okay, so if we if we take a, a simple example of um, a characteristic, okay, because remember now a gene is something that gives you your characteristics, and as I said earlier, genes can be passed on from parents to offspring. So in genetics, the term that we use for characteristics okay, is called the phenotype. Okay, so a phenotype is basically all of the characteristics that an organism has that have been determined by their genes. Okay, so examples of uh, phenotypes would be eye colour, okay, and hair colour. All right, we'll just stick with those basic phenotypes to explain uh, genes, alleles, um, and then ultimately a locust again. Okay, so for every characteristic or every phenotype, there is one gene. Okay, so for example, you have a gene for eye colour and for hair colour and for the thousands of other phenotypes that you have. Okay, now critically next is this. If you have one gene for every phenotype, then you therefore have two alleles. So for one gene, <coughs> there will be two alleles. And the reason why you have two alleles is because we have homologous chromosomes. Okay, so quick little sketch of some homologous chromosomes again. Um, here, that is a gene again, and there, but you can see that because we have homologous chromosomes, we have an allele on each chromosome. Okay, so let's let's sort of try to make a bit more sense out of that. So up here we have the gene, and let's go for eye color. That gene will code or will have the instructions to make the pigment that gives you your eye colour. All right. So that gene will then produce a specific protein. Okay. However, because we actually have, in effect, two copies of a gene, which are given the names alleles, you have the ability to make slightly different proteins. So this allele here could actually produce the blue eyes, but this allele here could actually produce brown eyes. Okay, so the gene is the instructions that code for a phenotype, but a gene can have two variations. Those variations are called the alleles, and each allele will potentially code for a slightly different protein. Okay, so if we go back to our homologous chromosomes here, what we have is that 
the alleles for a gene occupy the same locus. All right, they are at the same position on the homologous chromosomes. Okay, so you won't get the alleles for a gene being at different loci. They'll be at the same loci, okay, or locus. <clears throat> so that's that's what we mean about alleles. So we need to discuss further uh, this term allele because uh, this this term allele will form the basis of what we do in um, uh, what's known as genetic calculations. Okay, so we need to move on a little bit and start looking at a couple of other terms um, which are genotype, homozygous, heterozygous, dominant and recessive. Okay, now in genetic calculations we have to represent an allele because it is the allele now that is going to be inherited okay and just remember an allele is an alternative form of a gene so we have to represent them and we represent them using letters okay and we use either capital letters or small letters to represent whether an allele is dominant or recessive. Okay, so for example, we can use a capital A and that would equal to a dominant allele. If we have a little a, that would equal to a recessive uh, allele. Okay. So <clears throat> when we when we are representing alleles using letters, these letters will ultimately form what we call the genotype. Okay. Now uh, the genotype of the organism. Sorry. Okay, now what a uh, genotype is a key term that you need to know. And all it is, is that it is showing you which alleles an organism has for a particular characteristic or phenotype. Okay, so based on the lettering uh, that we give to alleles, we can have a number of different genotypes. Okay, so if we have homologous chromosomes again, and if we split it up into um, little boxes, which now represent the alleles, okay, so there's a purple one there, we have another one down here. So I just want to explain with this diagram um, <clears throat> homozygous and heterozygous. Okay, because those terms describe genotypes. So we have um, three different positions along this chromosome. Uh, of course, they're called loci. Now, in the purple one, let's write a genotype. So let's go big A, big A. Okay. Now, that's known, or this genotype is called homozygous dominant.
Okay. Now, homozygous means the same. Okay. The uh, prefix there, homo, means the same. Okay. So, when you have a homozygous dominant genotype, what you have is two alleles occupying the same locus on the homologous chromosomes and they are identical. All right, so what it means is this. If we go back to our eye colour from, uh, from earlier, I said that an allele can potentially produce uh, two different, slightly different proteins. It could be blue or brown for the, for the eye colour. However, that doesn't always have to be the case because if your genotype is homozygous dominant, what it means is the alleles will produce the same protein. Okay, so the alleles uh, code or produce the same protein. Okay, they are identical to each other. Okay, so the because the instructions or the code within the alleles are the same, they will both produce the same protein. So that could be either blue or brown, but we'll look at that in more detail later. Okay, so homozygous dominant is quite an important uh, genotype. Now, the next one is again, the alleles can be identical, but they are described as being recessive. Okay, so the genotype here is homozygous recessive. Okay, so again, they will code for the same protein. I'll explain what dominant and recessive is uh, later. Okay, the last genotype is when the alleles are different. So you could have a big A and then a little a. Okay, so the alleles are different. Now what I mean by that is they code for a different protein, but they are still codes for a particular phenotype. All right, so for example, that A there would code for eye colour, so would the little a. It's just the colour is slightly different, but it's still coding for eye colour, which is the phenotype, the characteristic of an organism. So when the alleles are different, they are known as heterozygous. Okay, now because we have a, a, a dominant allele, we actually always say that it's heterozygous dominant. Okay, so we make reference to the fact that there's a dominant allele there. So in this heterozygous um, genotype, we could then have an allele that will code for the blue eye colour, but also for the brown eye colour. All right, and, and, and when you are heterozygous, you have both, uh, your, your, your alleles code then for the slightly different proteins that make up uh, the phenotype. <clears throat> okay, so those are three important terms, homozygous dominant, homozygous recessive, heterozygous dominant. Those terms, recessive and dominant, are important, okay? If we look at the term dominant, 
what it means is this <clears throat> that allele which is referred to as dominant that is the allele that will always code and produce the phenotype okay now in the eye color example the color brown eye color the allele that codes for that is dominant okay so if you are homozygous dominant for brown eye color you will have brown eyes okay now if you are heterozygous dominant for brown eye color you have the allele for brown eye but you also have the allele for blue eyes but you won't have blue eyes because the dominant allele which is brown is always expressed in the phenotype regardless of whether there's a recessive allele present or not okay so the dominant allele is always expressed in the phenotype Now, the recessive allele, there's only one way that a recessive allele can actually contribute to the phenotype of an organism, and that's when it's in the homozygous recessive genotype. Okay, so recessive allele is only expressed. when the genotype is homozygous recessive and this is why if you do have blue eye color your alleles are identical they will both be recessive okay because that's the only way that they can contribute to your phenotype right um, there's the key terms that I just wanted to cover in this video um, I don't fully expect you to fully remember all of this at this stage we have to use these terms in context we'll do that in the next uh, few videos so once we start looking at uh, genetic uh, calculations or genetic crosses we can start to use these terms and hopefully then it'll really start to to click as, as to what these mean um, but by way of a uh, uh, a, a closing summary I think I need to bring together these terms in a summary just to show you a little bit better how they all link uh, together okay I've uh, quickly drawn out what I hope will be useful for you it's kind of a summary now of uh, the terms and trying to link them together into some sort of logical order okay uh, if you follow the numbers okay so number one we start off here with parents transfer of genes is uh, inheritance the study of inheritance is genetics so number two here the offspring has inherited the characteristics from the parents um, these are its phenotypes it's obviously also inherited the genes as well so phenotypes then if you go to number three they are produced or coded for by genes um, genes are located on chromosomes and the position they occupy is called the locus okay so that's number three number four genes can have alternative forms which are alleles okay number five 
These alleles can code for the same protein, i.e. they are homozygous. So there's your two little a's, two big a's. They're homozygous. If the allele... Um, if allele O is expressed, it is equal to the dominant allele. That's represented by a capital letter. So obviously the two A's there are the dominant alleles. The recessive allele is only expressed when no dominant allele is present. Okay. So number seven, um, we now have the genotype definition. All right, remember that the genotype is, is uh, describes what alleles an organism has for a particular characteristic. So number seven, if the alleles are both the same and recessive, they're known as homozygous recessive. If they are the same but dominant, it's known as homozygous dominant. Okay, and just remember again that the alleles are going to still occupy the same locus. Okay, so they're all at the same level on that diagram. Um, number nine then, uh, if you have a dominant and a recessive allele together, that's known as heterozygous dominant. And in this situation, the genotype shows that the alleles are different, but only the dominant allele is expressed. So uh, I've quickly run through that. I hope that helps a little bit um, to help you organise these terms. Um, so in the next video, we will be practically using these terms in real examples. And then hopefully it will further help you understand uh, what they mean. Um, I'll probably put um, a couple of activities under the video. Um, I hope to make some of these um, online activities so you can uh, do them on the computer and you don't have to print them out. Uh, but give them a try if I do put them in. Uh, but make sure you've made some notes from this video uh, to put in your files.